Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank, thank you for joining us from all over the world. So it's kind of a good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Thank you so much. So today we're going to be looking at um, cricket analytics using R. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through the agenda for today as usual. So we're welcoming our participants. We're grateful you're joining us. We appreciate your time and um, your company is well appreciated as well. Thank you so much for joining us. So I'm also going to use the time to introduce our organizers and also go ahead to introduce our speaker. Then we'll give time for our speaker to take on the floor and give us a deep in-depth into the topic of today. We want to really appreciate um, some of our special participants today, Olufemi, Victor, I can see all of you. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate your time. Tope, Summit, Santeno, and so many of you, I wouldn't want to take much of our time today. So thank you all for joining your really, really special. Thank you. So, um. I am Belekiso Olatunji. I'm one of the organizers of Abuja R User Group. So I also have Steven and Felix. We all are co-organizers of the uh, Abuja R User Group. We have the support of all our members and we really appreciate all of you. And our major sponsor is our consortium. So we've always really appreciated their support and we hope they'll continue to support our group as we move on. Thank you so much, everybody. So now I want to go ahead to introduce our speaker for today. So our speaker for today is Sam Ritz from Manic. I hope I got that right. Yes, this is right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So um, he has he had his master's in statistics from Calcutta University, having a major interest in astronomy, astrostatistics, and sports analytics. He's an avid R programming practitioner and explorer. So we really appreciate his presence here when we want all our members to know that R is used in so many fields. And this is a special one. We're looking at somebody from the astronomy, astrostatistics field. And we're going to be looking at data from the sports um, side of, the, of our world. Uh, I, and I believe we're going to have a wonderful time today. So I won't take much of our time. I'll allow you to take on the floor now. So then we'll take our Q&A after the training session. Thank you so much. Yeah, so thank you Abuja R user group for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak at your event on cricket analytics using R. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to be part of such a fantastic event and share my knowledge and passion for our programming and sports, specifically cricket. So okay. let me quickly share my screen and- Okay, good, you can go ahead now. Thank you so much. Yeah. We are honored to have you here as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, 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 sure. Yes, so let me just confirm if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, thank you. So let's get started. So uh, here I am, uh, today's topic is cricket analytics using R. And the, uh, today's agenda is uh, introduction, introductory session, and then what is cricket analytics, and then performance analysis, the most interesting part, and then predictive modeling, because uh, in every sports, we are actually want to predict uh, some future outcomes uh, beforehand so that we can fix our strategy, fix our plan accordingly. 
and then I have I will talk about some future scopes of this uh, analysis. So this is the introduction. Introduction. So sports is ultimately a form of entertainment, and if it fails to engage attention to the spectators, to the audience, and provide pleasure, then the performance levels of players are irrelevant. Furthermore, sporting success is a zero-sum game in the sense that winning is predicted on losing. But these considerations mean that the importance of every sport, particularly player performance of every sport uh, measures are circumscribed compared to the economic sector. Nonetheless, individual player performance probably underpins marginal income in most commercially developed sports in the sense that the individual player performance contributes to learn wins or a proxy measure to win, such as uh, in cricket, uh, runs scored by a batter, wickets taken by a bowler, or in football, you can say uh, goals scored by a player in hockey too. So this kind of things uh, actually uh, contributes to the teams. So a team's greater success in winning matches generally leads not only to greater sporting status, or popularity, but also is a significantly greater share of the sport's total income. So statistical measures in sport existed in the mid 19th century. While the use of analytical techniques with sports has grown substantially during the last few decades. In the earlier days, computer science and data science tools are hardly used for analysis of sports data, players, coaches, uh, and support staffs used to memorize past performances, weakness, and strengths of their opponents. But over the years, the need and urge of the game has rapidly increased, and the whole world started to develop immensely in terms of computational skills, both in hardware and in software. So cricket is a data-rich sport in which every ball bowled by a bowler generates a piece of huge numerical information. Thus, the game is expected to be a statistician's delight. Different quantitative studies by research based on data generated from the cricket are frequently encountered, out of which a significant amount of work is concentrated towards the performance measurement of cricket. So batting, bowling are two prime skills of the game. Nowadays, fielding is also considered a, a, for the same. Thus, different traditional measurements are used in cricket to quantify the batting ability and bowling ability of a particular um, player on and as a whole team. And also, cricket is a game of numbers. The runs scored by a number by a batter, the wickets taken by a bowler, the matches won by a cricket team, the number of times the batter response in certain way to a kind of bowling attack, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So the capability to dig into cricketing numbers for both improving performance and studying the business opportunities, overall market share and economics of the country, uh, economics of the country and economics of cricket via powerful analytic tools is a big deal. Uh, and cricketing, cricket analytics provides interesting insights into the game and predictive, intelligent, and to, uh, regarding uh, the game outcomes. So today, there are rich and almost infinite troops of cricket game records and statistics are available in the open source platform and websites such as ESPN, Creek Info, Creek Sheet, Creek Buzz. So there are lots of uh, available uh, sources out there. So these and several such uh, cricket databases have been used for cricket analysis using the latest learn, latest machine learning technologies and machine learning algorithms uh, and predictive modeling uh, algorithms, media and entertainment platforms, along with professional sports bodies associated with the game, use this, this kind of technology and analytics for determining key metrics for improving the match winning chances. So next, I am coming to this part of history of cricket. So cricket is one of the few sports that attracts a huge number of spectators. The test cricket format was a great attraction since the dawn of cricket. 
the famous reference to cricket was uh, once we are saying that cricket is a gentleman's game so this came about in the early days in england when the game was played by affluent class who were considered to uphold the virtues of a gentleman so cricket was then played with a competitive attitude but in a fair and honest manner but over the times uh, the importance of winning at all costs brought about a cultural change that diminished the very essence of what the game of cricket stood for the sledging and the off the field comments that one popularly referred to as the gamesmanship became a part and parcel of the royal sport so over the times test cricket has lost its popularity one of the main drawbacks of test cricket is uh its length which can span over 5 days as a result cricket's governing body and icc uh, icc is actually international cricket council the governing body of cricket in in the world introduced one day international cricket that is odi cricket known, known as in the year 1971 to address the need for shorter version of this game still odi cricket has last around 9 to 10 hours and it occupies almost a single day so and it had some limitations also which results t20 cricket came into the picture t20 uh, came t20 game uh, is actually introduced by england and wales cricket board in the year 2003 the format is fast paced exciting and well suited for modern audience now the game is actually main the gentleman game is to follow the gentle ladies too after all sports at the end is for all to enjoy regardless gender age and other demographic attributes so going back going to the next slide uh, t20 as the entertainment so nowadays uh, t20 cricket is treated as a form of entertainment where audience and spectators have limited attention span and seek immediate gratification t20 cricket in television and mobiles have become an element an integral part of widespread culture that the current society resides in one of the biggest advantage is that it's fast paced and action packed format as the matches are shorter and more exciting which makes the game more entertaining and engaging for fans who can enjoy a complete game of cricket in just 3 hours or some some cases 3 and 1/2 hours or 4 hours the same time which we usually enjoy by binging movies and web series so this actually makes it more accessible for all kinds of audience uh, all kinds of audiences uh, specifically in countries uh, where cricket is not uh, traditionally popular and in addition to this t20 cricket has also had a significant impact on the commercial aspect of the game it attracts more sponsorship and investment and has created new revenue streams uh, in uh, new revenue streams with some new new visions for the cricket boards and franchise teams of respective countries as a form of domestic p20 league such as for india uh, we have ipl indian premier league uh, for west indies we have caribbean premier league for south africa we have csa t20 league so there are many other uh, world league world t20 leagues are being played today so let me tell you some facts about t20 international match so the first ever t20 international match was played between uh, england women's team and new zealand women's team in the year 2004 and australia has played their first ever t20 international match in the year 2005 against new zealand Uh, but recently uh, icc is trying to make it globalizing the game and uh, they are actually try to introduce cricket uh, in the coming uh, olympics uh, that is new york olympic 2028 and uh, it is also to be noted that uh, the last commonwealth games uh, cricket for women is a integral part is the event where england has won the match won the silver uh, sorry won the gold gold medals so currently there are 94 countries are actively playing t20s 
and with them 12 of regularly playing and rest of them are being associate nations. So now come to the uh, performance analysis part. So uh, the performance analysis stands for an evolution of a player's performance as well as team's performance. It could be any sport, not just like cricket, like football, baseball, basketball, hockey, tennis, etc. So let's say there is a T20 match between Australia and England. We would like to know who actually played well. Does that mean who scored most number of runs or does it mean who had the best strike rate or does it mean who actually finished the match? So there are lots of aspects if we consider Alon as a batter. Similarly, if we look at the bowling, we can have some parameters which can be used to evaluate the best bowler and best fielder uh, in order to determine uh, those things, what we actually do is to evaluate players' performance and arrive a value by which we can quantify true performance of any player. Uh, let's say, suppose uh, a batter scored 50 runs of 40 balls today and 60 runs of uh, 45 balls yesterday. So we want to know which one is better and how we can evaluate these things. So these are the typical questions arises uh, in performance analysis in every sports, not in cricket. So I am talking about particularly in cricket. So uh, within a player, we can identify a lot of data points and lots of analysis can be done across the player and across the team as a whole. Batting average, batting strike rate, uh, how many times he or she got a chance to bat, number of dismissals, all are all coming to the batting domain. Similarly, bowling dom if for bowling domain, we have bowling average, bowling strike rate, economic rate, number of maiden overs bowled, number of wickets taken, etc. And here comes to the part where R, I am using R, the programming language, the statistical programming language to use my analysis. So R has the features as high performance data storage and handling facility. Here I have used the tidyverse package in which deep layer and ggplot2 has been an integral part of the whole analysis and visualization. Also, I have used plotly in some cases to beautify the graphs and plots. So let's come to the score analytics part. So before any analysis, we, we should have a data first. Otherwise, there is no point of analysis. So the first step is to data collection. So we have collected the data from Cricksheet. So this is an open source data collection platform. If we open this, you can see there is a drop down menu downloads. And from here, you can see CSV. So here you can see the lo a lot of data sets are actually present. So here I am only interested in T20 International, that is for main. So you, if you select the new and then uh, one zip file will be downloading, started downloading. So I have actually downloaded this. So I'm not showing this in, the, in here. Uh, so if we download this and extract, and then you can see a lots of CSV files are there by their unique match IDs. So our task is to combine all the CSVs into one to create a master data set that is actually contain the ball by ball information of every match altogether. And then the step uh, for data cleaning and pre-processing. So I am uh, showing you the sample data set here. So if you open any of the CSV files, you can see that there is a lots of columns are there and lots of uh, blank cells. So our first task is to fill up all the blank cells by zero for the sake of simplicity of our analysis. And then I, we have uh, created some extra features for our analysis. So I am just showing you this, um, the columns are match ID, season, start date, venue. This is actually for the all columns, uh, all uh, CSV files have the same number of columns and same number of uh, same uh, row headers, name of the columns. So match ID is for a uh, unique match ID. And season is the in year, uh, the year the match was played. The start date is the date when the matches was playing. Venue is the ground name and the city name also. Innings is one means the bat, uh, first innings batting and balls refer to the uh, number of balls at that particular 
uh, instant. So in every row, the ball number is changing. So in this data set, we are actually looking at ball by ball information. And the batting team, bowling team, and the team uh, striker means the batter who is actually facing the bowler. And non-striker is the batter who is actually standing uh, behind the uh, front, uh, behind the uh, non-striker's end. And bowler is the name of the bowler who is actually bowling. Runs of bat means the runs actually scored by the batter. No such extras and other illegal deliveries, no such instance will be calculated here. And this these are the columns for extras, wides, no balls, buys, leg buys, and penalty. And this is wicket type. So wicket type is the type of wicket uh, the batsman uh, got dismissed for that particular ball. And player dismissal, this is player dismiss is the name of the batter who got dismissed for that particular ball. So uh, this is the complete uh, overview of the sample data sets I have shown you. And now gets, uh, go back to the code part. So here I am using tidyverse, uh, deep layer library from the tidyverse and actually using uh, some of the gra graphics, some of the uh, deep layer verbs to uh, use our analysis, such as first I have make it as table, this data frame as, and then I have unselecting some unused rows. So unused columns that are no use actually, and then mutate and uh, mutate it over number, over type, so over type is uh, there is a power play which is um, belongs to over number one to six and then middle over and then followed by death over. And again, we have to we have interesting to looking uh, that if the ball is dot ball uh, single twice size and is a boundary four six and at the last as is it out or not. And also we have com computed the team runs. And then the start date I have converted in as dot date. So here I am filtering innings one and innings two because in some of the cases, the match will end in a tie and then the super over has been played, but that super over is for innings three and innings four, but we are not interested to uh, those super over matches. Only we are considered the first innings and second innings. Then I am coming to the performance analysis. So. Performance analysis, we have already discussed about that. So here I am showing you uh, top 15 countries. Uh, this 15 countries are the according to the ICC cricket ranking, T20 international cricket rankings. And we are actually interested to looking at uh, the dot percentage and the boundary percentage. This is the amount of the number of dot balls by uh, per uh, 100 balls. And this is the number of boundaries they have scored per 100 balls. So I have shown you the code here actually. So here first I have used a T20. This is the master data frame. And then I have grouped by the batting team and then summarize by dot and ball split. Dot percentage is nothing but dot by ball split into 100. And this is rounding and two decimal places. Similarly, boundary and boundary percentage. And then filtered the batting team in top 15 teams. And then rename the teams as batting team. And this is for the visualization part, the plot. I have used plotly function uh, to uh, create this chart. So here we can see that uh, West Indies has having the highest dot ball percentage. Whereas in the boundary percentage, we have England, India, and South Africa. They have the uh, better boundary percentage. That means they are usually playing boundaries in, this, in their innings. So performance analysis can be classified as uh, two steps, as I show, uh, t t told you earlier, that batting analysis, bowling analysis. So here I am showing you one interesting chart of uh, top five batters of five different nations. Say, Aaron Finch from Australia, Babo Razam from Pakistan, JC Butler from England, MJ Gaptil from New Zealand, and Virat Kohli from India. So see, uh, Virat Kohli is actually leading the leading here by the top runs with 4,008 runs, followed by Babur Azam, 3,355 3, runs. But interesting fact is that Virat Kohli has started his career uh, in 2010 or earlier. But see, Babur Azam has started to in, in the year 2016, but uh, gradually jumping to the second spot. So this is the kind of analysis we can do in cricket. So similarly, we have bowling analysis. So here I am showing you the types of wicket fall of uh, two countries batters. That's 
this is Indian and this is Australian. So this means that uh, the pie, this is actually a pie chart. So you, you are actually showing this, this is the how many percentage uh, the teams, uh, Indian batters got dismissed. So maximum they are being caught out and then followed by bold, then run out, then LBW. And then these are the very uh, low probability of getting called caught and bold, stamped, hit wicket and retired heart. Uh, similarly for Australia, you can see the same things, but a little low percentage of caught and a higher percentage of bold and also run out and followed by LBW, stamped, caught and bold and hit wicket. And next I am coming to this comparison chart. So here I am comparing two batters, uh, the two best batters, which we are calling nowadays. So here we can see that uh, Virat Kohli and Baburajam, uh, this side is for Virat Kohli left side and the right side is for Baburajam. So here you can see Virat Kohli is uh, almost uh, winning in every attributes except the number of fours and dismissed. But uh, otherwise highest run, you can see the same number of the same number they have scored for the highest. And also strike rate, Virat Kohli is actually leading. And in case of 50s also, Virat Kohli is leading. So in this way, we can actually play around the various uh, performance measurement matrix. Um, okay. So there is question. Okay, let me, let me take all the questions at the end of the session. And now I am coming to this match summary part. So here you can see, a whole match summary where uh, this is a particular match of India versus England. Uh, it, this is from uh, 2007 T20 World Cup where India scored 2018 runs and England just 18 runs behind and lost the match. So here you can see that uh, actually India is, uh, the run rate of India is actually lower than the England, but gradually in the last few uh, overs, India gradually climbs up to the top and finished the finish their total as 218. So in this graph, you can see that uh, the finishing is the ultimate goal here in cricket. So if you do better in the middle over in the power play, that does not actually mean that you can finish well. So that is the main key aspects of any cricketing cricket match. That is why the end of any match is very exciting, thrilling. Uh, so viewers can actually enjoy th that particular phase of the match. So now come to the interesting part of the predictive modeling. So we are actually interested to predict the current score, uh, predict the first inning score uh, by on the current scenario of the match. So here, uh, the first inning score is prediction has some attributes such as, uh, there are actually three attributes we can, uh, we can see, that is current over number, current score, and then fallen wickets. So this is the attributes for first innings score prediction. And then outcome is a prediction interval of a projected score at the end of the innings. And for the second innings, one additional feature is being added is the target score. So for second innings, we already have a score that was already scored by a batting, by batting team in the first innings. So we have to cross this score in the second inning. So that means this is a extra feature that is target score. And the outcome is uh, likelihood of chasing the target. Uh, so this target is actually not, we are actually uh, saying exactly our surety. So there is some probability that how uh, the team has uh, actually chasing the target. So these, all these things I am, be, I am showing you in the later slide. So here comes to this uh, predictive model and the outcomes. So in every ball, there are a possible of actually eight outcomes. Among them, five and seven are having very low frequency. So in this case, you see that uh, zero has uh, zero and one has the highest frequency, and one is the highest frequency. That is nine thousand and three nine hundred and thirty-six. So these data actually based on historical matches that are all played for the country India. So here I have intentionally removed the five and seven outcomes as we can see that th uh, five has only 39 frequency and eight has uh, seven has having only eight frequency. So that means that uh, this is very low frequency and low probability of occurrence. And then I have calculated the probability, relative frequency, and then cumulative probability. Then I am coming to the evolution of the model part. So 
the first thing is to prior probabilities of the outcome of each ball of a particular team. Uh, see here I am uh, for a particular I have selected India and I have actually computed the prior probabilities by this row that this is the column for the prior probabilities. And then the uh, total number of balls is usually 120. So set uh, n as 120. And then uh, we have to draw a random number from uniform 0, 1 distribution. And then we have to compare these uh, numbers with the uh, cumulative probability that is uh, called as empirical cumulative distribution functions or empirical CDF of the outcomes. And then uh, we have to assign the outcomes uh, by their random numbers. So uh, then uh, the sum of the predicted outcome class gives the actual forecasted score of the given innings. So here we, I am showing you uh, with a demo. Say suppose uh, we have uh, drawn a random number that is coming as 0 0.881 suppose. So this 0 0.81 number is actually less than uh, this and greater than this. So uh, this particular random number is falling to this four category. That means we have to assign as runs four for that particular random number drawn. In this way, we, we, we will have 120 random numbers and then we have 120 outcomes and then just summing up all the 120 outcomes. But keep in mind that W stands for wicket. So we have to keep in mind that the total number of wickets is not less than, sorry, not greater than 10. So once that we total number of wickets ten, then we have to stop this process. And then we have uh, we have to simulate the whole procedure by ten thousand or one thousand times to get actual to get the prediction limit of the predicted score. So now this is an interesting plot. What I am showing you that. This is the actual versus predicted runs of India fast inning. So based on the data, based on the outcome probability, outcome class, we actually plotted the predicted runs for each and every ball of the innings. And the actual score is 170, that is uh, shown in the dashed line by orange color. And the predicted runs is actually, this is for the uh, 120 balls or some 120 to 23 balls. There might be some extras. So in that way I have calculated. So the thing is that uh, as long as we go uh, go to the uh, end of the innings, that our prediction values, prediction runs actually are closing to the actual runs. So as the MAC, so as the over increases, that means the ball number increases, our MAC, that is mean square error is decreases. So actually this is this can be looked upon as a quite uh, realistic prediction. So now I am showing you the by some numbers actually. So for the fast innings, we have the current scenario 100 and number of wickets that fall in, it is three and over number is 13.2. That means uh, 18, 80 balls are actually over. And the predict set score, it is showing that one, the, this is the actual interval that is 142 and 162. So this is this is quite quite realistic uh, thing you can see by this predict, prediction interval, uh, by the pro probabilistic model that we have built. Uh, in the first second innings, the current scenario, uh, suppose the score is 66 and wickets is four and the over is 9.5 and the target score is 130. So here I am showing you uh, the predicted score must be greater than 130 with some probability 0.84. So here is, this is the actual thing lies that we cannot accurately say that we can win the match or we can um, predict the score accurately, but with some probability, we can say that uh, this team can cross 130 runs with some probability that is 0.84. So this, this particular things is all based on the probabilistic model that I have showing you in this uh, previous slides. So let's say, some future aspects for the model upgradation. So I have shown you that uh, the uh, outcome probability at each of the phase of the innings, uh, it is uh, fixed. But uh, if you get deeper into this, you can see that uh, for power play and the death over, the probability of scoring six and fours are high rather than that of in the middle over. So in that situations, we have 
a chance to dynamically update the outcome prior probabilities. So in this way, we can upgrade our model. And the second factor is uh, the uniform probability. So we are actually assuming that the uniform distribution of the model outcomes, the probabilities, the probability distribution of the model outcomes. So that not necessarily true. So we can use any other type of statistical distributions, probability distributions to model these uh, parameters uh, based on the match conditions. And there are lots of hidden factors out there that we are not actually considering while we have built our probabilistic model. The first one is venue. So in home, away and neutral, so there might be a chance that in home, uh, there, is, there is a crowd support, there is a uh, pitch conditions, uh, that is uh, batting friendly pitch conditions have a higher probability of scoring high runs. Uh, where is the turning tracks uh, in the bowling friendly pitch, there is a chance to lower the, lower the scores. And also the weather condition is that uh, for a due factor in the day night matches, due factor is a huge role that is playing in the uh, performance analysis of any batter, any team. And also the rain curtailed matches, there is a limited number of overs that is reduced to 15, 20, 14, or even 10. And also there is an, another approach to circumscribe this measure is by DLS methods, dark worth lewis method. So there is lots of hidden factors that we are not considering in this model, uh, probabilistic model. So yeah, we can update this model by these factors as well. And for the one thing I want to notice that uh, if you see the out count of the outcomes, there is an imbalanced data set. So in every machine learning problems, uh, the data set should have balanced one. So here we cannot see the thing here. So there is the probability, the frequency of three is uh, very low. Uh, compared to the zeros and one. So this is a typical imbalanced data set. So here many machine learning models, many statistical learning models actually failed. So we have to keep in mind while we are doing some predictive modeling that we have to balance the data sets. Otherwise uh, we can have inaccurate, inaccurate uh, measures, inaccurate predictions. So with that, uh, I have wrapping up this uh, today's session on cricket analytics. Thank you, everyone. Uh, or for any feedback or if anything, you can contact us. Uh, you contact me in this email, LinkedIn, Twitter, and GitHub. Thank you, everyone. And any suggestion and any queries. Uh, so over to you, Billy Kisu. OK, that, that was awesome. Thank you so much for your time and we really appreciate you joining us today. So I'm going to have, um, that's going to be the first question. Would you be sharing the script with us? Hi, yes, yes, sure. I have, I am sharing the this slide with you. Uh, actually okay. this is published in the RPUBS. I am sharing this link with you. Just uh, wait a minute. Okay, okay. So um, if you have any questions you want to ask, you can just signify um okay. uh, yes i have questions for ov from ov group that's can we update our probabilities using bayesian stuff yes we can do uh, we can do the bayesian stuff actually i have uh, doing some bayesian stuff here the prior probabilities so these prior probabilities again can be modified and updating by another prior probabilities by that uh, the team's performance team's current performance the player's performance team's rating so there are lots of aspects are there you can actually think about it Okay, I think there are some questions before that. Why um, from Indrajit Kundu? Yeah. So he's asking why maximum analytics is used only cricket, not other games like football or other or another. No, no, the, this is not actually true. Actually, every sport we have some analytics team there. So this is this session is only I have specifically mentioned the cricket analytics, but this is not the case. You can see there is some football analytics and hockey and other every sport. There are some analytics team, their analytic data scientist team. They are actually doing for the analysis. 
Okay, I think um, Victor is raising his hands. You can go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your for your talk. Um, yeah, thank you. Very interesting. Um, I think um, for me, my one of my big takeaways from this talk is that uh, in data science, hmm. I think knowledge is, is key. Uh, for someone like me that, that, that doesn't know anything about cricket, in fact, I regret not uh, going to touch, research the game <laughs> before going mm -hmm. for it. So yeah. uh, maybe maybe if I done some research on the rules of the game, okay, like when you when you're talking about the innings and the uh, overs, I have no clue what uh, you know what that means. So I think yeah. I will need to go back and look at it. Uh, but you know, really, it it shows the you know how how uh, the domain knowledge is very very key you know, to understand. Yeah, yeah, game. right, right, right. Domain knowledge is very 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 important. Yeah, yes, for, for every sport actually, not just cricket. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Victor. Okay, thank you, Victor. Thank you. So do we have any questions again? I know we're all mostly not familiar with cricket, but the most important thing is we want to know how R is being yeah. used in the various industries and profession that yeah. we have. So yeah. and this is kind of very good to share. Okay, thank you so much for all the good comments there. Thank you, yeah. Jamash. Abiro, we're grateful for that. Thank you. I'm thank sorry, you, I have, I have a, 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 one more question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, sure. um how big was that that's the data set? How how big was it? Uh, yeah. This data set actually, uh, there are uh, total 3000 CSV files. Uh, in each CSV files, you can actually 250 rows. So, combining all these, it will uh, 4 million rows actually. 4 million with uh, 20 or 25 variables, 24 columns actually. So, this is the long data set actually. Okay. So do do we yeah. do we file as as um, a big data big data analysis? And uh, not like big data, uh, you can do it in uh, normal data sets. No, mm. okay, but as but the thing is that uh, the day by day the data set is increasing. So for some future uh, we can have uh, long data sets. That means it will cross four million to five, 10 million rows. So right. that time we can think about big data. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, there is two questions from Orgo. Uh, is it possible to include the quantification of players impactness? Uh, yes, it is possible. So for that case, we have to consider a lot of things for this analysis. So here I am just give you an overview of the brief uh, model, uh, brief modeling of probabilistic model. So the, here I am not considering any impactness of the players. So yeah, is it always possible to do? I am actually talking in the, uh, all this in these uh, hidden factors and this future scopes part. Uh, can we fit normal distribution uh, to this model? Uh, normal distribution means the data sets are, uh, we have to first test that whether it, the data set is normal. And this model means which model? Uh, this probabilistic model, the outcomes. So the outcomes is not actually normal. If we can see there is imbalanced one. So I think we do not fit this uh, normal distribution here. So maybe some other distribution we can uh, look or some mixture of normal and other Gaussian, uh, normal uh, with uh, gamma, with beta and any other distribution we can look around. Oh, okay, um, sorry, yeah. before I allow you, Femi, um, can we get link to the data set that you use so that maybe our participants can download it later? The uh, link, sorry. can you share it in the chat? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, I, okay. uh, yeah, I am sharing you again, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. So Femi, you can go ahead, thank you. Yeah, yes, Orgo, you are right. I think distribution-free approach is fine. Yeah, we can use distribution-free, some non-parametric approach here. Yes, that is always possible. Okay, thank you very much, Samrit. I think uh, in one of the slides, I did saw you made mention of uh, 
uh, class imbalance in the data sets. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, right, right, right. Okay, I just want to clarify. So what are the approach in which we use uh, to, uh, to resolve the class imbalance in the data sets? Yeah, so uh, for to resolve that issue, uh, we can downsampling the data set or upsampling. So there is two basic approach and there are many other approaches available in statistics uh, you can think about, but the basic approach is to uh, downsampling. That means, uh, I'm again going back to this slide. See, there is uh, frequency is 114. So by downsampling means uh, we have to all uh, outcomes have the same uh, same count as of 114 by downsampling this or by uh, from these 7380 7, observations, we have to randomly select 114 and then uh, by, followed by one, two, and four, six, etc. So in that way, we have a balanced data set, all having the 114 outcomes. Or the another thing is uh, to upsampling. That means uh, which has the highest highest outcome, highest count. That is 9936. So we have to draw random sampling, random sample for these six and the other classes to matching is 9936. So this two approach I am currently thinking to resolve this issue. Okay, are you okay with that, Femi? I hope your question has been answered. Okay, good. Yeah. You have a thumbs up there. Thank you so much. So do yeah. we have any comments, questions? We have the link in the chat, and we're also going to share the link later. Okay, there's another question yeah. here. Can you suggest yeah. some books? Uh, some books of uh, on what? For cricket particularly or for sports? So for sports analytics, there are lots of uh, books are there. So not uh, using R actually, there is lots of other programming and also a uh, theoretical uh, sports analytics book is also there. Uh, I can, uh, one book is from uh, Cricket Management. Uh, that is, um, let me find out. out. Okay. Yeah, so this is the book uh, I am okay. sharing in this comment box. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this book you can refer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you. So do we have any comments? Questions? Okay. Okay. Um, so I have attached the screenshot of the book. You can look at oh, it. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Okay. So if uh, we don't have any questions now, I think we can use this opportunity to thank um, Samrit for the opportunity to have him on our program. We're really grateful to have you there. Okay, thank you so much. We have a lot of um, thumbs up for you here in the chat and we really appreciate this. This is good. Thank you so much for the comments. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank, thank, thank you, you, Manuel, Femi, Victor. Thank you, everybody. So I want to use this opportunity on behalf of Abuja, our user group and our members, we want to appreciate you coming on our program. Thank you so much, Samrit. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate you. your time. Yes, thank, thank you, you Abuja Arusa Group, and thank you, Billy Kishu, for this wonderful yes. opportunity giving me. 
Thank you very much. So we look forward to collaborating with you next time. Yeah, sure. Okay. And I'm always thank you. There. Yeah. Okay. So and thank you to all our participants as well and our members. We really appreciate your time and we look forward to having you next time. Thank you very much. So it's a bye from me. Thank you, Virtisu. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.